Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to the autumn news session of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from weatherist.com, your captain of chaos, commander of confusion, colonel of catastrophe. Let's talk about our winter weather coming up here. Now, this is not the winter forecast. That video, I'm going to do a video on it as well as release it to the public tomorrow evening so you can look forward to that. Now this particular issue we're going to be talking about some changes going on in the pattern here. I think that may be catching some people asleep. After all, everybody knows it's supposed to be a completely innocuous, insignificant winter in the eastern United States because that's what the vast majority of the consensus forecast is calling for. So let's get right to it. Uh, first, there's a picture of my smiling face here. Uh, from Richmond, Virginia, um, uh, perhaps soon to be the Shenandoah Valley. We'll see. And then, uh, of course, uh, there's my email, the Verizon. You can reach me at the Gmail there. Now, I have changed the uh, Twitter page because the other one was getting hacked too much by, well, let's just say unfriendly types uh, during the political season. And so this is now just completely winter weather all the time. And uh, so you can stop by there and give me a follow if you want. And then, of course, we're over at the uh, Weather Risk uh, Facebook page. All right, so our topic here is going to be the next three weeks, uh, November 25 to December 15th. And I think it's looking more uh, off to a start, better than what people think it was going to be. So uh, let's get right to it. A lot to talk about here, a lot of interesting stuff. Now, let's start off first with the four major teleconnections that dominate winter weather uh in the uh you know the north america especially in the eastern u.s so let's start out with that so you know teleconnections are specific jet stream patterns or configurations which um we know as, as the arctic oscillation which can be either the negative phase or the positive phase or the epo right there eastern pacific oscillation the uh, positive phase or the negative phase and then there's the nao which is the positive phase or the negative phase and of course the pna pattern which again is a positive phase and a negative phase. So these key teleconnections are very important. They set up the weekly and daily weather maps and the things such as uh, low pressure and high pressure. They determine how strong the low pressure is going to be, how large the high pressure is going to be, cold fronts and warm fronts, uh, the troughs, how deep they're going to be in the jet stream, and of course sustained warm and cold spells. So the teleconnections are the big picture items which drive the small feature items that we follow on the daily weather map and on let's say the weather channel or your local news service or what have you. Um, now right now uh, clearly as of November 23rd all four of these features, the Arctic Oscillation, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, the NAO, the PNA, all four are in the worst possible position or phase with regard to any kind of winter weather, whether it's cold or frozen, you know, we're talking, not talking rain, we're talking, you know, cold weather or snow or ice or what have you, freezing rain. So, uh, so if you're looking at it, you're thinking, okay, well, nothing's going to happen, it looks mild, what's the big deal, what's DT getting excited about? Uh, you know, so let's take a look and see what's going on here. Now, this here is the latest chart here of the Arctic Oscillation. And you can see that the back in the autumn, back in here, we were having, you know, periods of going back and forth, you know, moderately positive, moderately negative, that sort of thing. But then at the beginning of really late October, all the way through here, it's been consistently positive and quite strongly positive. So that's not a good sign going into the winter. Or at least it would appear to be like that. Now this is uh, this one here is uh, let me say the Arctic Oscillation. Let me pull up the NAO here. One sec. Okay, now here is the NAO, and again we can see that for most of the autumn we had these intervals of moderately negative and moderately positive. We were back in August, the late August. We had a pretty nice August there. Then we went positive again. Then in October we started getting cold. We went negative again. But since the end of October, since the sustained strongly positive, and that's what have been that's what it looks like. We're heading into December. There's December first there on the screen. You can see uh, it looks like it's staying positive. Here is the PNA pattern. You know the PNA is the West Coast Ridge. Remember, we need a ridge on the West Coast to pull down cold air from Canada. So, as we can see here during the autumn. We were consistently positive, which allowed the cooler air to come southward. And we didn't have, you know, we, the summer was okay. It wasn't awfully hot. And uh, we could see the late summer to the er, autumn season, September to October, we were getting that ridge and we were fairly cool. But then, starting in on mid-October, it would have consistent negative values 
which meant a trough on the west coast and that means a ridge over the southeastern states and warmer temperatures so that wasn't very good and if we look at the EPO here look at the trend here on the EPO this is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. Now, this is this is a fancy term for the Alaskan Ridge. When you get the ridge in Alaska, you get cross polar flow when the EPO is negative. And that pulls the really cold air southward combined with a positive PNA, a ridge on the West Coast, and you get a big massive ridge which goes all the way from Siberia down into central Canada pulling in the Arctic air. So that's how you get your big Arctic outbreaks when the EPO is negative and the PNA is positive. But in this chart here, look at this. It's consistently positive and it has been. There's been no Alaskan Ridge. So while we've had some cool air come down, but for the month, month since really October, uh, it has been consistently, as you can see here, positive. Very few brief minor dips to a negative value. And sometimes it's quite strongly positive. That's not what you want to see if you like cold weather. Now, let me briefly also remind you that the seasonal forecast. I want to. I'm going to talk. This, I talk about this in tomorrow's presentation. The video you'll see. This is a representation of the recent CPC Climate Prediction Center forecast uh, for a uh, few last few years, and uh, you can see the predictions made in uh, mid October. And then the actual result for the winter. For example, we remember the severe cold winter we had in 2000, you know, 13, 2014, right here. Look how cold it was. Look at the actual forecast. Uh, that's a miss. 2012, 13. Now that was a pretty good. That was pretty decent here. 12, 13. That was a good forecast. 11 to 12. They had the cold. No. You look at that. They've got to head exactly backwards. That was a miss. No. That didn't work out. That was a miss. That was a miss. 2010 and 11, the cold air was in the Pacific Northwest, warm across the South. Nope, cold everywhere. Uh, that was a miss. 2009, 2010, they had a little cool air in the southeastern states, all the warm air up in here. Uh, that was a miss. And 2008, 2009, they had a warm everywhere. And actually, that was not a bad winter for the northern half of the country. Uh, and the southern states weren't that mild either. So that was a miss. And then also remember the severe winter of 2014, 2015. December was mild, but January, February, March were quite cold and wet and stormy. And we can see that for the winter here, again, a complete miss. They didn't, compl I mean, there was, this was a miss, yeah. I mean, they got the West Coast good, that was fine, but the cold here in the East, they did not get at all. They had an equal chances that they missed it. I consider that to be a busted forecast. So, you know, keep that in mind when you look at the forecast here. You know, consensus doesn't always work. And the other point I want to make out here is that, you know, there are significant differences in the location of the La Nina. When you have a west-based La Nina, your temperatures for the winter months are much, much warmer, as you can see here on the left-hand side of the eastern side, the right-hand side, where you have east-based La Nina, where the cold water is coldest off of Peru, you have a much different type of winter, not nearly as warm. So uh, that's another thing to keep in mind. Okay, let's get back to our teleconnections here. If we look at the projections, we see some major changes coming up in here. So here we have the Arctic Oscillation right here. And notice what's happening. So we're right here, we hit this peak on November 27th, and look at the general trend, definitely towards the negative values here. Now, it does. it's hard to say whether it's actually going to go more negative than this, but definitely goes to neutral by the time we get into the first several days of, no, of December. Look at the uh, NAO, the Greenland Block, the North American Oscillation. Again, and this actually does go negative uh, during the first week of December. There's, I mean, that's that's pretty clear, and not strongly negative, but clearly negative. And that's that's the most we've seen in a long time. Here we have the wet. Let's look at the Pacific on the Pacific side of things. Here's the PNA pattern, the West Coast Ridge. Look what happens. Boom! A significant, maybe even major ridge on the West Coast of North America during the first week of December. And then the EPO, which had been, as you can see, you know, very positive. Look at this. It starts going down and it starts going down and back to neutral, even slightly negative during the first week of December. So these are all significant changes here that you shouldn't need to be aware of. Things could change really quickly here, folks. And, uh, you know, don't be fooled by November. You know, my own view is that mild Novembers are actually good because, you know, if you get a cold November, what are the odds of the pattern staying cold all the way through the winter? Not great. The same thing if it stays warm. If you have a very warm November, what are the odds of it staying warm all the way through the winter? Not great. Same sort of thing. 
All right, anyway, let's take a look at that. This here is the uh, Thanksgiving Day rain here. We have this first piece of energy coming in right here, the upper level, upper low, very potent through the Midwest here, right through in Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri. And there's another piece of it, a trough right here coming down to the Pacific Northwest, and that's going to cause low pressure on right here, and then the front's going to move through. There's our big ridge, so it's nice and warm. And it looks like this. I mean, it's not a big deal, but that's the rain for Thanksgiving morning on the East Coast. It clears out. Temperatures are in the 50s, upper 50s, and mid to upper 60s. Many areas, uh, depending on where you're located, east of the Mississippi River, no real cold air. All right. Now things begin to change a little bit. So then that piece of energy, which we talked about here in the Pacific Northwest, becomes a closed upper low right here. Whoops, let me call it my marker. Right there. And by this is now here of Friday, uh, November 27th, and then it moves to Texas. Uh, potentially some severe weather associated with this feature as well. But there's also another piece of energy coming down to the northern jet right there. See that? And what's going to happen, those two pieces are going to phase and develop a significant storm on the East Coast. The first big East Coast storm of the season, I think. And we can see what happens here. This is the European model now for 180 hours. Now, this is the way out there, of course. Uh, but you can see what it does. The operational European, this is the operational run up here. And you can see there's the southern low and there's the northern low. You see how they're beginning to phase into one big system here, one big giant trough. And this is the European ensemble here. And you can see it's got a major trough here. The main piece of energy in the southern jet stream, but it's a pretty significant trough. And that's going to cause low pressure to form on the coast and then come up the coast in some capacity with significant rain. Now, there is some uncertainty about this, about how this flow is going to form. I mean, we are talking seven days out. But, all right, here we can see this is the GFS. Now, this is from the new run here on this on this uh, Tuesday, Monday night, Tuesday, early morning. You can see it's got a pretty big low here. And the GFS has been showing this for several days. You know, the big low here coming up the coast, several run after run after run, big rain coming up the coast. This is for uh, November 30th. Ahead of it, a lot of warm air. Then the cold front comes through, and there's a lot of cold air behind this system with this trough. We have a big old high. Look at this sucker down in here, and you can see the big high here. Look at these winds coming down, pulling the cold air in. There's a lot of cold air comes in behind this with the cold front. Now, the European is a little different. The European has more energy in the southern stream right here. There's the low, and the front comes through like that. So the cold air still comes southward, but the low does not come off the coast on the European. It takes more of this track here. So it doesn't. So that's one difference between the two. I do not know which solution is correct at this point. The ensembles are all over the place, um, and we can see here. This is the Euro EPS for December first. It's got the low off the coast, a little bit, and you can see that here. Um, general low pressure right here. Oops. Call my marker, and, the, and it's right there off the uh, off the Hatteras coast. And uh, for some reason, it won't show off the marker. Oh, there it is. And uh, it's right there, and you can see it. And now we have the cold front right here, and you can see the cold air really coming southward here on the morning of December 1st. Now, what happens is that the European actually keeps the system fairly close to the coast and actually pulls in the cold air, which is really kind of surprising. Now, this here is uh, this is the upper air map. Uh, this is the 12Z European on Monday, and you can see uh, what it does is uh, this is the uh, year uh, for December 2nd, and then we have December 3rd. So um, this piece of energy essentially catches up to this one as it drops down. Call my marker here. As this drops down like this, it deepens the trough. It this pull keeps the surface low inward. You see how this one comes southward and this goes that way a little bit. So that's why you still have this trough and the surface low here. Pretty nice ridge here. Notice you have positive anomalies in northern Canada near Greenland. So this would actually be a negative NAO here. And you would also have a positive uh, PNA pattern right here. So that's interesting. And that produces some sort of coastal storm, according to the European. And uh, if we look at it in cl more closely, this here is the European operational at day 16. Now look at this low pressure area just off the Virginia, North Carolina coast and the cold air coming in behind it. There's the low, here's the front, and here's the high over the Great Lakes sending the cold air in. And there's some pretty cold air coming down here on the morning of December 2nd. Let me enlarge this and you can see a focus here. And you can see the low is right here. Now this is the 0850 line for snow, 
and this here's the 32 degree line so this is indicating rain going to snow here in eastern and southeast Virginia the Delmarva maybe interior northeast North Carolina on the morning of December 2nd now this is a long way off and again we don't know if the low is going to be this close or what's going to happen but look at these temperatures on the morning of December 2nd and remember the European kind of this far out has a little bit of a warm bias 32 degrees in Richmond interior North Carolina 32 degrees you know now on the coast at 37 in Norfolk and and and, and 40 in, in Nags Head's way the ocean temperature is still way too warm it's too early in the season for this but again this would be rain going over to snow if this scenario to work out if this scenario were to work out we're not saying it's going to happen but there's a lot of cold air coming in on this thing according to what the European is showing now so this is uh beyond what happens here this is now december 6th and december 7th we have more of these energies coming into the southern jet stream and we still have this big ridge you know right here extending into canada you see how this thing is just extends into canada from the pacific northwest all the way in to eastern canada and that causes again a positive p and a pattern and we end up getting a negative na nao on both of these maps and there's another next system here for december 7th it's very suddenly it's a very active pattern and now the europe now the gfs is goes back the european the gfs let me do this one first this is the 18z gfs it pulls the southern systems here and it pulls them inland in other words it phases these two pieces of energy and it pulls into one big storm up the appalachians so it's heavy rain in virginia north carolina and you have a big snow you have a elevation snowstorm maybe for Asheville and for mountains of north of te eastern Tennessee and then rain in Ohio and Kentucky so on and so forth this is possible if the systems phase but this is no support from the GFS ensemble at all and uh, I think the GFS is over phasing the two streams here a little bit so that's what I, I don't like this scenario indeed this is the zero Z uh, the brand new Monday night, Tuesday morning, 0Z GFS run, November 24. And look at the difference. This is the previous run. This is the new run. It's got a bunch further to the coast. Um, and it's got heavy snow in Ohio, Kentucky, uh, and so on and so forth, and rain in Virginia and Pennsylvania. So we'll see if it continues to shift to the coast. But again, this is a pretty big looking system. So, you know, potentially a big system, November 30th, and then another one, December 3rd or 4th. Um, you know, it's it's active. It's getting active. If we go beyond this, this here is December 11th and December uh, 17th on the European. And you can see we have blocking here, folks. This is this is high latitude blocking. This is sustained negative uh, NAO here, a nice ridge on the West Coast, a moderate trough on the eastern United States, uh, continuing here right through the middle of December. So there are more possibilities down the road. According to the European weekly models, this came out then this Monday night. And then if we look at, um, this is my, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, so that's, you know, looking pretty, pretty darn impressive. Now here, let me clear this out here. Uh, this here is uh, the uh, CFS showing the same time frame. So this is, uh, we look just at the European December 11th through the 17th. This here is the CFS, uh, the 12th through the 18th same time frame and again the cfs is showing the same sort of thing uh, now it doesn't have as much blocking in greenland eastern canada as the european does but there's a significant trough if this is correct this would be like a mountain snowstorm and rain on the coast but it's a sea it's a start to the winter uh here in the middle of december if that's if this is correct and then even beyond that this is now week four uh this is uh, takes us to december 22nd the 15th to the 22nd and the trough remains there and it's pretty cold there's a decent sized ridge on the west coast it's not severely cold but it's not mild and it's, it looks active so like i said december has possibilities and finally you know let me uh, quote here the turkey as we're headed towards thanksgiving and remind you about conventional wisdom and conventional thinking a turkey is fed over a thousand days by the butcher and every day confirms to the turkey and the turkey's economics department and the risk management and the pundits that the turkey and you know the turkey's analytical department that the butcher loves turkeys and every day the turkey gets fatter and fatter and more confident that he's going to get a free meal but on day 1001 which is november suddenly there's a surprise for the turkey 
Just keep that in mind. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll uh, catch it, uh, I guess, tomorrow when I do the video update on the other winter forecast.